Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Valerie, and this is The Hargett Life. In today's What's For Dinner video, I'm sharing three new and easy recipes that we tried out this past week. And stay tuned to the end, I made some no-baked chocolate oatmeal cookies. This video is special because it's in collab with my friend Kat from Southern Farm and Kitchen. She's so funny, she always makes me laugh, she has the best personality, she has so much great food content on her channel, she does recipe videos, what's for dinner videos. She has a ton of crock pot recipes. She does grocery hauls and more. I'll have Kat's channel linked in my description box below, so be sure to go check her out and show her some love. And if you're coming over from Kat's channel, welcome. Thank you so much for watching my video. I love to cook, I love to bake, I do recipe videos, what's for dinner videos, grocery hauls, and more. So if any of that sounds like something you're interested in, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and become part of my YouTube family. Now we're gonna start off by making an easy chicken rasserone casserole. I'm trying a new recipe tonight. It's for chicken rasserone casserole. All you'll need is a can of cream of chicken soup, some sour cream, a box of rasserone, some french fried onions, and some shredded chicken. I'm gonna start out by making this rasserone according to the instructions on the back of the package. And the recipe did call for chicken flavored rasserone, but I already had this cheddar broccoli rasserone, so I'm sure this will work fine too. While the rasserone's cooking, I'm gonna start on the rest of the mixture, and you'll need four cups of cooked shredded or cubed chicken. We like our shredded, so I always use my KitchenAid when I want to shred chicken. I probably shredded it too much, but it'll be fine. And I'm just gonna mix everything in the bowl here. Adding in about a cup of sour cream and a can of cream of chicken soup. And I'm gonna give this a little more flavor by adding this Kinder's garlic and herb seasoning. I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit and then we'll add in the cooked rasserone. I'm completely out, but I bet this would really be good with a bag of frozen steamable broccoli. You could just microwave it and then add it into this mixture. My rasserone is done. I'm just gonna add it into the mixing bowl here. Just gonna give it a little mix. Okay, I just mixed it up just enough to get that rice mixed in. I'm gonna set this to the side. Okay, I have my casserole dish. I'm just gonna spray it with some nonstick spray. I'm gonna add my mixture right in here. Okay, just smooth that out. And then we're gonna add on the French fried onions. If you didn't have the French fried onions, you could even add on the Ritz cracker topping. Just crush you up some Ritz crackers and sprinkle them on top. 
or you could add some cheese, whatever you like, make it your own. You could add some veggies to this. And the recipe called for six ounces of French fried onions, which is the size of this bag, but I didn't quite use the full bag. And I'm gonna put this in a preheated 350 degree oven, uncovered for 30 minutes. That one turned out really good. Me and my husband both liked that one. But my daughter didn't like the French fried onions on top. So next time, I might do a Ritz cracker topping or even crush up croutons and put on top. And maybe add a little cheese. <laughs> next up is the Pioneer Woman's Sour Cream Noodle Bake. Hey y'all, tonight I'm making the Pioneer Woman's Sour Cream Noodle Bake. And for this recipe, it called for a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. I don't have one, so I'm using a 24 ounce jar of marinara sauce. You'll need salt and pepper, a cup of shredded cheddar cheese, a half a cup of sour cream, and I'm not sure why they call it a sour cream noodle bake, because you use more than double the amount of cottage cheese. So you'll need one and one fourth cup of cottage cheese. And you'll need eight ounces of egg noodles. And a pound of ground beef that I'm gonna start browning on the stove now. So I had thought that the recipe said one pound of ground beef, but I went back and looked again and it said one and one fourth pound. So I separate my hamburger meat in one pound bags so I'm just gonna add in a half a pound of mild sausage. So for this meat mixture all together, I'm using one pound of ground beef and a half a pound of mild sausage. And while the meat mixture is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and cook eight ounces of egg noodles according to the package instructions. And that is, this is a 12 ounce bag, so I'm not gonna use all of this bag. And it said to cook the noodles to al dente, so just make sure not to overcook them. I'm sure that sausage is gonna add in a lot more flavor. And I've decided to add in a teaspoon of minced garlic. And you can do garlic powder if you want, or you don't have to do any of that. You could add onions in here too if you want. I'm gonna drain both of these, um, the meat mixture and the egg noodles, and we'll move over to the counter and start assembling. I've drained this, and now I'm gonna add in the tomato sauce and salt and pepper and let this simmer while we make this sour cream noodle mixture. Add in some pepper. I'm gonna add in a half a teaspoon of salt and 15 ounces of tomato sauce. And I'm using the marinara. This is 24 ounces. I'm just gonna go ahead and add it all. I don't know what I'll do with that little bit of tomato sauce. Now we're gonna let this simmer and I'm gonna go start on the rest. I'm gonna use the same bowl I boiled the noodles in. I drained them, I'm just gonna add them back in. I'm gonna add in about a half a cup of sour cream. And one and one fourth cup of cottage cheese. And I made sure I got the small curd cottage cheese. And the recipe said to add a little more pepper to this mixture. And I'll have the recipe linked in the description box below. And I'll also list any changes that I made. Okay, now I'm ready to assemble this. And someone had asked in my last video where these things came from. I have no idea. I've had them for like 10 years, but I just use them for like when I want to sit a hot plate 
or a hot pot down on the counter, but I've just always kept them on my stovetop. Really just for decoration. I'm gonna start Can't forget about the nonstick spray. <laughs> Me and Mama Mel go through some nonstick spray. Okay, I'm gonna pour in half of this noodle mixture. Now I'm gonna add on half of this meat and sauce mixture. Now I've got eight ounces of shredded cheddar cheese. I'm going to add on half. I make a mess when I cook. Do y'all make a mess when y'all cook? <laughs> I do try to clean up as I go though. And now we repeat. The rest of the noodle mixture and the rest of the sauce mixture. I'm kind of glad I added in the 24 ounces of marinara sauce instead of just the 15. Now, if you wanna make this super, super easy, the Pioneer Woman does say that you can just mix all this together. You don't have to keep the sauce mixture and the noodle mixture separate. You can mix it all together and then just dump it into a casserole dish and bake it like this. But this way, it just, I guess, looks pretty. Now I'm gonna add on the rest of my shredded cheddar cheese. Now this goes into the oven at 350, uncover for 20 minutes. That one turned out to be a big hit. We all loved it and I will definitely be making that again. But next time, I'm gonna to try to make it super easy, and instead of doing the layers, I'm gonna to try to mix it all together and see how that turns out. For this last recipe, I came up with something on my own. I didn't have the fresh veggies to make a soup with, so I used what I had in my pantry and came up with an easy crock pot cheeseburger soup. And my husband had been wanting some no-bake chocolate oatmeal cookies, so I made those as well. Okay y'all, so for tonight, I'm gonna make a cheeseburger soup in the crock pot. I had some frozen hash browns in the freezer that I need to use up. So I also did not have any celery or onions or carrots. So I'm kind of winging this recipe. So this is what I've came up with. I'm gonna use about four cups of these frozen diced hash browns. I'm gonna use a can of sliced carrots a can of evaporated milk, a can of cream of celery soup, cream of onion soup. I'll use a little sour cream, probably about one fourth of a cup. Some pepper, some parsley, a little bit of basil, and about three cups of chicken broth. And some Velveeta melting cheese, and one pound of ground beef. And I'll make sure I have the full recipe in my description box below. Okay, to my crock pot here, I'm gonna start by adding three cups of chicken broth. And I use this to make my chicken broth. And it hasn't completely dissolved yet, but it'll dissolve as it cooks. Now I'm gonna add in four cups of frozen diced hash browns. A teaspoon of parsley, a teaspoon of basil, 
I'm going to add in about a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. And when the soup's done, I'm going to taste it and see if I need to add more. I'm adding in a can of cream of onion soup. Some cream of celery. A can of evaporated milk. A can of carrots drained. And I stuck my knife down in here and kind of tried to chop them up a little bit. Just going to stir it up. Okay, I'm going to cover it. I'm going to cook this on low for six hours. Or you can cook it on high for three to four hours. In about 45 minutes before this is done, we'll brown our ground beef and add that in. And add in the Velveeta cheese and sour cream. I've got about 45 minutes left on the timer, so I'm gonna go ahead and brown this and drain it and get it ready to add into the crock pot. Okay, this is done and I've drained it. I'm gonna take it over and add it to the crock pot. Now I'm going to add in 16 ounces of cubed Velveeta cheese. And you can add less of this if you want. It'll still turn out good. And if the soup is too thick for you, you can always add a little extra broth. I'm gonna add about a fourth of a cup of sour cream and then stir this up. Oh mercy, this looks delicious. I'm gonna put the lid back on and let it cook for about 30 more minutes, just until that cheese is melted. My husband's been asking for some chocolate oat milk cookies so while we're waiting on the soup, I'm going to make him some cookies. So for these, you'll need a stick of butter, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, two cups of granulated sugar, three-fourths cup of peanut butter, a half a cup of milk, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and three cups of quick oats. And it's very important to go ahead and have some wax paper or some aluminum foil down so you're ready to put your cookies on. And I have a certain pot that I make these in. I always have to use this pot. This is my teapot and my chocolate oatmeal cookie pot. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat on medium and add my stick of butter. And I'm going to let this melt for just a minute. And making these cookies is a learning process. So if you don't get it the first time, keep on trying because I've had them to not set up before, and I've had them to set up before I've even got them out of the pot. And the butter's melted pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in a half a cup of milk, two cups of sugar. Yes, that's a lot of sugar, but these are so good and so worth it, trust me. And three tablespoons of cocoa powder. And make sure you go ahead and measure out three cups of quick oats, three-fourths cup of creamy peanut butter. You can use crunchy too, I'm sure that would work good. And have your two teaspoons of vanilla ready. Because once this starts to boil, you're gonna boil this for a minute and a half exactly, and take it off the burner and throw everything else in. I'm gonna turn the heat up to medium high. Okay, starting to bubble. I'm gonna set my timer for a minute and a half. 
And during this minute and a half, you whisk, whisk, whisk. <laughs> I guess this is why I use this pot is because this is the only pot that I can use a metal whisk in and that rubber whisk just don't get it. Okay it's been 90 seconds. I'm gonna take these off the heat and you gotta do this quickly. I'm gonna add in half a cup of peanut butter, two teaspoons of vanilla. I've already pulled out my Christmas tree measuring spoons. Whisk this without slinging it everywhere because this is very hot. I'm going to switch to a spoon. Add in three cups of quick oats. My husband's going to be so happy. <laughs> I used to make these like at least once or twice a week. And then he decided he needed to slow down so I quit making them. And then he asked me the other day if I forgot how to make them. <laughs> okay, and you work quickly with this. Now we're ready to put them on the foil. I've got a cookie scoop. Okay, I got 23 cookies out of this, and you can make them smaller and get more, or you can make them bigger, but this is just the size we like to do them. And this cookie scoop is about a three tablespoon cookie scoop. Okay, time to check on the soup here. This smells so good, and it was so easy. Now dinner's ready for tonight. And we have dessert. That one was delicious. It turned out really thick and creamy, which we love. But if you want a thinner soup, just add a cup or so more of chicken broth. Those cookies are always the best. And if you haven't ever tried them, try them and let me know what you think about them. Well, y'all, that's it for today's video. Be sure to check out Kat's channel and let her know I sent you. And one last thing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.